Hi, I'm Richard McKittrick and I'd like to invite you all today to take a tour with me of Tonicmore Rare Breeds Animals Farm. We're based here in Tonicmore Gardens and the site is owned and run by Armagh City, Banbridge and Craig Avonborough Council. When you come to Tonicmore here we've got quite a large range of different types of rare breeds. We've got Irish Moyle Kettle, we've got the Dexter Kettle and Shetland Kettle. We've also got uh, Bagot Goats and Pygmy Goats. We have Galway sheep, Jacob sheep and Oxford Sandy and black pigs and we have a large selection of rare breed poultry, both chickens and we have geese and ducks as well. Here in Goat Mountain you will find our uh, goats. We have two different types of goats here on the farm. We have the bagot goat which is very distinctive with its white body and black head and forelegs. These goats are very, very rare. There's only about 350 breeding females in the world. So we're doing a conservation breeding program here with them. These are the first bagot goat herd ever to be brought into Ireland. And the goats originally were in one estate in England, in the, the Midlands, and it was Lord Bagot's estate. The goats have been there since the mid 1300s. So they're a really, really, really old breed. They've never been bred for any commercial purposes or anything. They were just kept as a parkland goat. So they're really, really back to the old traditional goat. The bagot goat is being used now for doing conservation browsing. Uh, they're not a grazer like a cow or a sheep. They tend to uh, graze woody plants and shrubbery and bushes, which makes them an ideal animal for going into uh, areas for conservation browsing, so clear it out to help improve the ecosystem and the habitat for plants and animals, which we'd want to be encouraging into it. So hopefully in the future, we'll be using some of our baggots here at the farm to do some grazing on some of the sites, maybe around Oxford Island and the Natural Nature Reserve down there. Here we have uh, some Jacob sheep. Now the interesting thing about these sheep are that they can have two or four horns. They are a really old traditional breed. They would have originated in the Middle East and they moved west with people through Europe. They came to the UK about the mid 1800s. And if you're down around the farm at Easter time, around April, we'll have some nice lambs. At Tonicmore Farm here we keep a wide selection of uh, rare breed poultry. We have Indian game, we have silkies, we have black australop, we have whale summers, uh, buff orpingtons, buff leghorns, black monarchas. So we have a wide range of birds. We have uh, New Hampshire reds and we have the, the dorking. Most chickens have uh, four toes three at the front and one at the back, except for the dorking, which has got five toes. So the next time you're down at Tonicmore Farm, see if you can find the dorking with the extra toe. We also have a wide range of waterfowl here at the farm, domestic waterfowl. We have uh, geese, ducks, and we have a few different varieties of geese. We have the buff and grey Africans. We have white Chinese. And we've got a very special goose here called the Sebastable. Now the Sebastable has a genetic uh, default in it, which means that its feathers sort of split. It's not painful or anything like that there, so don't worry about that. It's just that there's a genetic defect and the feathers go all fluffy on them, which means the bird can't fly, but it gives it a really fluffy and uh, nice attractive appearance. So the next time you're down, see if you can spot our Sebastopols.
Here we have uh, some of our turkeys. Now this breed here is a uh, bourbon red. It's named after a bourbon county in Kentucky in America because uh, turkeys are a native breed to uh, North America. So we have the bourbon red here, so we're trying to do a bit of uh, breeding with them to get them uh, the numbers up because across the whole of the UK, all the turkey breeds are all on the RBST's uh, danger list, red list, because they're getting very, very endangered. Go and get your breakfast, girl. This is Gloria here. The Gloria is one of our Oxford Sunday and Black pigs. Now, the Oxford Sunday and Blacks, uh, twice in the last century, have nearly went extinct. There's only about 300 breeding sows left in the whole of the UK. Now, an interesting thing about pigs is that uh, pigs have very, very bad eyesight, but they have an exceptionally good sense of smell. So you'll see a pig, pig has a flat nose, and the flat nose is because pigs originally would have been a forest animal, and they would use their nose for rooting about, sniffing out acorns and bugs and grubs in the leaf mold, and they shovel about with their snout, looking for food. People think pigs are uh, a dirty animal, but pigs are actually very clean and very intelligent. If you see a pig in the summertime rolling in mud, two reasons it's rolling in the mud. One is for pigs can't sweat, so to cool the pig down it has to roll in the mud and the evaporation of the water evaporating off their skin cools down their body. Also pigs roll in the mud to keep off insects and stuff. So it's a bit like you using sun cream and your mum putting sun cream on you, so that's why you see the pigs rolling in the mud. This is the Dexter breed of cattle and it's one of the native breeds of cattle to Ireland. The Dexter breed of cattle is uh, native to Ireland. Uh, they were developed in the 1750s from the old Celtic black cattle. They are predominantly, come in three different colours, predominantly black, red and dun. The example we have here today is a red one. Uh, they were known as the poor man's cow because uh, they were kept with in uh, old traditional farmsteads. It took little grass to keep them because they were small and they could be brought into the house in the wintertime. People actually slept above them in one of the bars, used to give, use the heat from the animals to uh, heat themselves in the winter months. The Dexter is the smallest breed of cattle in the British Isles, so they are, and we use them for conservation grazing. They're ideal for this because they're an old traditional breed. They're very hardy and they can stay out all year round. Plus, because of the size of them, we use them for conservation grazing around Loch Ness Discovery Centre, which is a, an ASSA, an area of special scientific interest. And we use them down there because of their light weight in the wintertime. They don't, what they call, poach the ground. They don't sink into the ground as much, so they don't do as much damage. And when they're eating the seeds and just distributing the seeds when they're walking on the ground they only push them down a certain depth which is ideal for encouraging wildflowers. I'd like to introduce you now this is Sarah and Sarah is a rare breed Connie Mara pony and Sarah has been on our farm here now for two years. Sarah was gifted to us by the National Parks and Wildlife Service and she, uh, we give them an Irish Morley cow in exchange. So the Connemara pony is originates back to uh, the original horses would have come over from with the Viking raiders in, this, in 700 AD and they'd have brought ponies and stuff with them. So. There would have been cone ponies on the west coast of Ireland, but then when the Spanish Armada sank in the 1700s, uh, there was Andalusian ponies 
were rescued from some of the galleys and they were set free on the west coast of Ireland and they bred with the original Viking horses and that's where you get your Connie Mara Pony breed from. Now they would have been used for draft on the west coast of Ireland which means they'd been used for pulling carts, pulling peat out of bogs and they would also have been used for maybe plowing and then people would have used them for going to church on a Sunday as well. Now they're predominantly used for show jumping. They're some of the world's best uh, show jumping ponies because they're a very intelligent horse and they're very docile as you can see here and they make ideal show ponies. This is the Irish Morley cow and this is the only breed of livestock native to Northern Ireland. In the 1970s the Irish Morley was in nearly extinct. There was only uh, 30 cows left and two bulls left in the world. Since then a lot of work has been done with uh, the Rare Breed Survival Trust and farms like Tonic Moor here. We've had the uh, Morley since 1985. And now, thankfully, there's about 1,500 Morleys in the world now, mostly in Northern Ireland and in the UK. We get a lot of our food from animals, so I'm going to introduce you here to Molly, our cow. And Molly is going to show us where we get one of our foods. And the food we're going to show you today is where you get your milk from. To produce milk, a cow needs three things. She needs to have had a calf, she needs to have food, which is grass in the summertime, hay and silage in the wintertime, and she needs to have lots of water. Do you know where you get the milk from a cow? Well, the milk comes from this part of the cow, which is called its udder, and you get the milk from the cow via its teats. So to get the milk out, we have to milk the cow. So this is how we milk a cow. This is where you get your milk from. And do you know what else milk can be made into? Milk can be made into lots of different products. So if you like yogurts, milk's made from, yogurt's made from milk. We get cheese as well. And everybody's favorite, we get ice cream as well from milk. And also my favorite, chocolate. 